So my name is Scott Smirchek. I'm from Kansas City. I um, came here last year, enjoyed it, and so I'm back here again. Um, this is a very impromptu talk. I put it together last night. Uh, so this is just a, about a project I've been working on um, in the last uh, month or so uh, called Love KC, and it's built in Rails, and so I just want to tell you about my experience building it. I've done all of it for free just in my spare time, uh, you know, just to learn Rails, but also to help serve our city and my church. And um, so, so I just want to tell you about that. Um, thanks to the guys who helped me uh, get the connector and the Wi-Fi, since it was, it was kind of scary being the first talk and not having those. Um, so anyway, uh, real quick, I'll go through the site and then... And then I'll just kind of talk through kind of like how we went through this, kind of the benefits I saw, and um, things like that. So LoveKC is a fairly simple site. Uh, it's, the point of it is to help volunteers get connected with organizations that need help in their city. Um, so first of all, it's location-based. So that's the first thing you'll notice. And this will actually be uh, where I live, so I've saved that here. Um, but it gives you a list of organizations that are near you with the assumption that organizations that you're closer to in your neighborhood, you're more likely to volunteer at. And so it'll give you a quick little summary of each of these organizations, tell you where they are. And if you want to dig in and find out more, then you can go to each of those organizations, learn a little bit more about them, and you can sign up. So the sign up process is really a request to get more information from the organization and we help facilitate that so you enter your name and your email kind of your availability and like any notes and then you can get updates uh, from love kc for other things um, and what happens and i'm not going to show this because it'll actually like send an email to organization which isn't very helpful right now but It'll send an email to the organization and say, hey, you have a new volunteer that wants to help, like get in touch with them, um, tell them how they can get involved, what they can do. And so uh, that organization will get that email and then they'll reply through the LoveKC website to that volunteer. Uh, the reason we have them reply through our site is so that we can keep track of organizations that have responded and organizations that haven't. Because one of the most frustrating things as a volunteer is to say, hey, I'm available to help, and then you never hear anything, and so you kind of get frustrated. Uh, so part of the one thing I'll do in the future is like have a cron job or something that'll every day say, hey, organization, you haven't responded. Like, what's up? Uh, and that's, that's really like the core of the site. Um, there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff I did administratively to like, Organizations can apply, so that happens um, as a different process, and they'll apply and like put in all their information, and then um, as an administrator, I can approve pending organizations. Um, and that's, that's really to make sure that organizations that are on our site are legitimate, like use their resources well, and are going to be good places to volunteer. Um, as well, and part of like why this was such a good learning process is there's so many different little things like just searching uh, for organizations. Um, so I got to learn how to do searches uh, in Rails. Um, uh, so like if you want to help with kids, you can find all the organizations that have to do with kids. Um, and you know this is just. Uh, all aims, like, you're not supposed to spend a ton of time on the site, you're supposed to get it done and find an organization that you care about and sign up. So that's that. So I saw a lot of benefits from this. Uh, first of all, I was working with an actual, like, stakeholder. We had meetings every week to, you know, go over the site and, like, have him tell me this is what we need, like, that's not going to work. And I could actually just, like, go to him. It's kind of like pretty realistic to consulting. Um, I also had to deal with changing requirements all the time, like week to week, like I implemented one feature with categories and they wanted nested categories and then they're like, nah, never mind, I don't want nested categories, I want just, you know, the regular categories. Um, and so you have to deal with that and Rails makes that very simple uh, with the database migrations and um, just the kind of the simplicity of like how Rails works. Um, 
I'm sorry if you were hoping to learn a ton about Rails. I'm that's not really the focus, but uh, so with database migrations, you just like incrementally make changes, and that works really well with this model of how I've developed this site. It was just very incremental changes, and I worked kind of this lean, agile type methodology to build it. Um, one thing as I was like wanting to learn Rails is I found a lot of like blog applications and just these basic um, tutorials, and they weren't really good enough. I mean, you can kind of do them, but overall, they you know they kind of lack in real experience. Like if you were say I'm a Rails expert now, like you're not. You just did a tutorial. But after having done the LoveKC site, I actually feel like I could go get a consulting gig or you know something and say, yeah, I have Rails experience and it's actual experience. Um, and you know, the nonprofit aspect I think is really good because you can affect real change and it's not just this throwaway site or something that's you know maybe not worthwhile. But and the other thing is that nonprofits need help. Like there's so many organizations that need anything basic and I mean there's there's some really good things like uh, coders for charities and uh, a couple other things that will bring programmers and developers and web developers and designers to help these organizations put together websites because you know they can't spend five thousand dollars to hire a consultant for a month um, and you know serving an organization yeah it doesn't have the resources so uh, what I learned, uh, I learned how to do basic Rails development. Um, that's, I mean, it's a pretty simple site and, you know, there's like lots of different pieces that kind of fit together. They're pretty small, so it's like easy to wrap your head around. Um, but there's actually a lot of advanced stuff too. Um, for instance, like even just implementing the address. Like when you want to put an address for an organization, like you have to validate their street address, their city, you know, all that stuff. And then um, I'm geocoding that address, so I get a latitude and longitude. So, like, you start with these really simple concepts, and then all of a sudden they become a lot more advanced, um, which really helps to, like, kind of build your uh, skills. Uh, the other thing was that addresses can be associated with many different organizations or perhaps other models, and I won't go into that, but it took me a lot of time to figure out how to do that. Um, and, you know, categories are pretty simple uh, organizations, and so you just get into this. Um, and, you know, over time it kind of gets more and more complicated as you kind of grow the features and your skills. Um, the other thing is I worked with so many different uh, gyms, which are little pieces of functionality that you can include in your application just by saying gym device. So like any application I needed authentication, I needed authorization for admins and regular users. And so device is a great R Ruby gem for Rails that basically is just like include this and all of a sudden you have authentication. Uh, can can is a great uh, gem for authorization and it Again, is very plug and play. You just say, if the user's role is admin, then they can manage everything. If they're uh, organization, then they can create organizations. Um, and if they, and then you can do some special stuff like if their email, if the user's email is the organization's email, then they can edit that organization. Um, and you just keep getting into advanced things like that. Uh, so here's like a gem file and what that looks like. And so you can just see all of the things that I've used here. And I won't go into all of them, but they're all helping you build this app really quickly. I didn't have to spend a lot of time on these minute details like authentication. I mean, at work, we spent probably three months implementing authentication with like multiple people. And I implement authentication in four hours by myself. <laughs> um, how am I doing on time? Good. Okay. Uh, friendly ID and Geocoder, uh, those were two great helpful gems. Uh, 
Geocoder is great. You can do distance queries and um, you can geocode. It'll geocode using Yahoo or Google or anything. Like you can geocode IPs into addresses, um, which fit very well with this application because I need to get geolocations for both the users and the organizations. A friendly ID, this was incredible. Uh, if you notice, when I click on like a category in the URL, it's not just like categories slash one or slash ten, which is the default for Rails. You don't really, I mean, a lot of people do that, but it's, it doesn't look very good, and it kind of exposes your, you know, oh, you have an integer for that ID. Um, so Friendly ID is a great resource to get, you know, these URLs to be a slug of that um, name of that organization. Um, and it'll even handle conflicts in history, which is really great. Probably the most fun one was using Elasticsearch and Tire to implement search. Um, Tire is uh, this brilliant gem that just makes it super simple to search anything. All you have to do is include these two lines and your model is searchable. <laughs> it's really easy. <laughs> and um, there, uh, if and then if you want to make that searching better, and you know a little bit about Elasticsearch and Lucene and how to work with that, uh, then you can you can make up these more advanced concepts. Um, and so, one thing I've learned with Rails and Ruby and these gems is that they're all super simple to set up initially and get your happy path right. And then they all provide a way to make it better or configure it just for your specific purpose. Um, and that's what I did here is I wanted to analyze different fields of text differently than other fields. And I wanted to embed the address and the organization so that I could search by location. Um, <clears throat> and you just get into all this and I get, I mean, I spent like three hours and I got search and I mean it's just that's amazing. Um, the other thing was using APIs so uh, you have a lot of opportunity to use APIs with even just this basic application. Um, for instance I use MailChimp API which I believe they're a sponsor here. That's actually where I learned about them last year. Uh, but MailChimp is a great API for well, actually, a website for s setting up lists of emails and users and sending out email campaigns like, hey, here's our weekly newsletter, or uh, we just added this new feature to our site. And um, that's our goal here with this receive updates or the subscribe. Like, we want people to come to our website and stay connected. Like, they don't have to stay on our website all the time. But if we want to like say, hey, we released this new feature, there's a new organization near you, something like that, we can use MailChimp to do that. So MailChimp is managing that for us, and I just use that API. Mandrel is um, associated with MailChimp. They're the same company, essentially. Uh, and Mandrel handles the basically the SMTP or one-off mailings. So like when a user registers, I can use Mandrel to send them an email uh, to say, hey, here, confirm your email. Um, and as well, that's I'm using Mandrel to send emails to the organizations when they, uh, when the new volunteer requests information and likewise when they email the volunteer. Cloudinary is a great um, image uploading and manipulation resource. Uh, it's um, it's handling all of our uh, images for organizations. So like all of these images here. And it actually lets you upload an image of any size. And then when you retrieve it, specify what dimensions you want. And it'll kind of try to pick the cro best cropping. And you can, you can do things like tell it to center on a face and things like that. and. Um, the other thing is they're free. Uh, so all of these, all of these APIs and apps and 
whatever I've used has been free. Like I'm hosting on Heroku and using like Searchbox for Elasticsearch, which is free. Uh, Cloudinary is free for the, like they all have these free tiers, which is great for a site that doesn't expect much traffic. And then if I need to, I can increase it. So, you know, Heroku, everybody knows that's has that free single dyno tier. Um, and MailChimp lets you send like 12,000 emails like for free a month. Like, I'm never gonna do that. So, um, so it's really encouraging. I mean, you can build a website for free and keep it free for like ever, really. And you could do that for a nonprofit, and I mean, they would they would love you forever. <coughs> um, so the other. Probably the last thing I learned was just how to overcome problems and implement unconventional features. So I mentioned a couple of them already, but it's like as you go through these things, you kind of like, you always run into these little problems and snags and it's like everything has been smooth sailing and then you hit this one thing and it's like, hmm, how do I do that? I'm not really sure. Uh, and so that's where you like, I think that's where, where you really grow as a developer um, is when you find those really hard places and you have to overcome those challenges. Um, and doing a real application is really going to help you find and overcome those. Um, and as you're doing this, I mean, get help along the way. I did a lot. I use Railscasts, uh, my local Ruby user group in Kansas City, um, and then Google. I mean, you can find just about anything on Rails and there's so much help out there. I would pay for Railscasts. Um, I did, it was very helpful. Um, pretty much I'd just watch a 10 minute video and then like go implement it myself. So um, that's about it. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them or I can go through more code too, so. Uh, testing, did you do any unit testing? Yeah, so I did do some testing. Um, I did more at the beginning because I was like, oh, this is, Awesome, I'm gonna you know, make it really testable and do Rails testing. And then I got really frustrated because I was trying I was like spending hours trying to figure out how to test this certain thing in Rails, because a lot of Rails testing is kind of magic, like how it works. And so um, I kind of stopped doing it, which is kind of like a shameful thing to say, but um, honestly like Rails, like it's not that easy. Like, it's not, it wasn't that easy for me, I guess. Um, there was a lot of magic going on and I was spending more time trying to figure it out than I was building, you know, a website. Um, I think I'd still like to go back and kind of revisit that. I listened to a talk from a guy uh, in our Ruby user group and he was saying the same thing I was like, I was like, that's exactly how I felt. Like, I just stopped testing because it was so hard. Um, so, I would like to do more, but. Uh, okay, uh, the validation for like, okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm just validating that it's there. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, not kind of uh, yeah, the, okay. the big validation I did was probably for email, um, and I got a gem for that that validates the email is actually true. You mean like it goes and sends an email to test if it's true? Or no, it, uh, it rejects yeah, it's a good... That's not built into Rails already? No. Oh. Yeah. Okay. But hey, there's a gem for it, so... Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then actually Mandrill does some... Helps you with email validation, too, because they'll say, oh, test at example.com. I'm not going to add that to your list because that, that's a fake email. So. Anybody else? So you were using uh, mini tests for notice, it looked like? Yeah. Is there a reason you picked that over like, one of the other testing frameworks? <laughs> it was probably to my uh, wrongdoing, I guess. I, I probably shouldn't have tried to use it. I had heard from uh, some pe from other developers that they had been using mini tests and Rails, and they're like, oh, it's like so much better. But there's not very many resources on how to do Rails testing with mini tests, and so. Um, 
I don't know that I would, <laughs> I don't know that I would do it again, uh, unless you're like doing very specific unit testing instead of Rails testing. Like if you're just doing like the typical Rails testing, do RSpec, I think that would probably be better. Um, anybody else? Okay. Thank you.